each and one of you. And if you want to share that with other people, I offer 45 minute free discovery calls. So you can make use of them. Or if you just want to invite people to somatic consent or this, what we're actually doing, what is that about, how you can use it and what is it for, or if anybody has any question about anything individually so that everybody has a one time discovery call of 45 minutes and um, uh, take advantage all of that please share it it's as well publicly on, on the web page so please use it share it and make it um, accessible for other people be relaxed lean back um, and take something in your hand whatever that is yeah something like that and the main thing is that we want to do is with this exercise is to coming into present moment awareness and bringing all our attention to our hands to the skin and into the sensation in the hands and we do that for about four or five minutes and i invite you to just make connection with your hands like temperature of the object is it smooth or soft and just feel whatever you feel with your with your skin is it rough or is it smooth and as well Welcome all sensations and feelings, whatever they are, however they occur. And you might slow down your speed of your movement by half and by half again. Then you go really slowly so that you recognize there's actually nowhere to go. There's no goal, no target to reach just to experience your skin you might find somewhere a part on your hands it feels kind of pleasant whatever pleasant means to you it's more like this tinglish I call it sometimes like an electromagnetic sensation in the skin it just feels good and I invite you to stay there that might be between your fingers or your fingertips or your palm or somewhere where it's good already Just stay there with the sensation. And if your mind wanders, that's okay. That's what the mind does. And bring your attention straight back there. You might become aware of other body feelings and sensations. Now all welcome to mm. and drink that all in what you feel there with your hands.
you're not doing anything for anybody or nobody's doing anything to you or for you. It's just your experience by your choice. You move because you can. You feel because you choose. The slower you go, the more you will feel. It has nothing to do with love or relationship or with sex in general. And it's too simple for the mind. And though it's the default mechanism of every touch, And slow your hand down till they stop or stay there as you like. Let that sensation in your body reverberate for a moment. And slowly opening up your eyes, orientate you somewhere. slowly bring your awareness back to the screen. The difference between emotions and feelings. Feelings is everything that is happening here right now. So what we feel, it normally takes about 90 seconds to two minutes approximately. Yeah, so it's the nature of our feelings. They are here right now. And emotions is everything that's longer than two, three minutes that is um, coming with a story, some, it, it comes with some um, yeah, ideas and conditionings. And the, the, the difference between emotion and feelings are, feelings are for dealing what is here right now. So to express our feelings is important. And the emotions are for healing the past. They want to tell us something is going on. We have to have a look. So this is, is part in ourselves that is looking for some um, clearing. So there are only four uh, uh, core feelings and emotions. What is sad, what is anger, what's joy, and what's fear. And every other feeling or emotion is a mix between the two, or a mix between three, or a mix of four it's to a certain um, amount. So, and when we have too much of feelings or emotions, then our um, capacity to be with them needs to be kind of um, numbed up that we don't feel too much. So we create something internally neurologically like a numbness bar. And the less we want to feel, the higher we put that bar so that we literally don't feel anything. So most people have their numbness bar somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, so they are from the neck downwards kind of numb. And everything is happening in their head and in their, in their mind, in their rational thinking. So what we do with this exercise is we um, sensitizing our capacity to feel and experience uh, sensations. And what that is doing when we are in action and feeling, there's a specific part in our brain, it calls the insula, that is getting activated that allows us to feel and when we do that, and that's the slower we go and the more subtle we go into that, the lower the numbness bar goes. So we just actually start to feel more. So we, we, we bring our numbness bar down 
from what is the, I would say, the average with most people, I would say maybe 60, 70, maybe 80%. So they are like mostly um, don't feel anything. So we learn to bring that numbness bar down to about 10% or maybe even five or sometimes 15. So it just variates. So this entire thing is just, it's not a fixed thing. So that we can use our feelings and emotions for emotional intelligence so that we can use them for engaging in the moment with what is and share with other people what's going on because our feelings and our emotions are an important indicator for other people to engage with so not that we only show and express our feelings and emotions that we as well are capable of tuning in other people's feelings and emotions, what guides normally into a place of empathy and compassion. So the lower it goes, the more we feel. And sometimes it's really important, you know, when situations are overwhelming to really bring that numbness <laughs> high up and say, okay, I don't want to feel anything. I just want to get out of the situation as fast as possible because it's part of our survival mechanisms to, um, um, withdraw from what is too much. So it's mm -hmm. neither good or bad, but we want to be capable of um, accessing our numbness bar and lowering it down to engage on another level with other, other people. Some people, they can't feel anything. They're just like, well, I don't know what you're talking about here when we do that. And they have, um, th their numbness bar is so high up that it's just like hard to tune into any sensation. What I notice in my exploration and discovery of that most people living kind of from here up, and I would say if people can't feel anything from the neck downwards, I would say they're in an average of maybe 70, 80% of a numbness bar activated constantly, unconsciously. What, what I would say related to the polyvagal theory is that um, that you know cultural created numbness or kind of violent created numbness or any kind of numbness um, is is not an enemy or is, is nothing wrong so so when i look from the polyvagal theory that i want to say it from that perspective that the numbness is something that if we can't get out of a situation it needs to be there and it needs to be acknowledged the point is if people grow into this numbness through conditioning, if they grow and um, develop into a cultural numbness and they don't know anything else, then um, it's actually difficult to address it and actually make, make it accessible because everything else that is not numbness when numbness is being perceived as the norm then everything else that is not numb can be too much or can be overwhelming or can be wrong. Or, and then it's the question how, how to bring people in a conscious way out of that numbness, what is literally a well-functioning adaptive mechanism into the place of, okay, here I can let go, here am I safe, here I can feel, here I can be, and here I can engage. And then when the engagement is happening, that it's just a complete no man's land yeah not knowing how to how to be with the feelings that come up in ourselves not knowing how to be with the feeling that comes up in other people and then not knowing how to relate with these feelings and expressing desire and limits and and i think that the that the engagement system is just like a it's it's just like a perfect matrix, a tool to actually unlock and create this environment of safety for people in any direction. That can be trauma related, that can be um, people who want to explore or discover something that is out of the norm, like kink, that, that most people having a sexual theme that is so suppressed in their expression that this sexual theme needs an enough environment, environment that people can say, okay, there's something going on sexually in my own um, individual theme. How can I 
live that out without being suppressed or shamed or guilt tripped from the outside that there's not that there's something not okay with me and and and, and i think that counts for all directions um when the numbness bar is is on so how can we how can we bring that into that level that 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 as we are is totally welcome and okay the topic of the day the orgasmic blueprint so how does it fit together with what we do here with uh, somatic consent and that's super simple that this little exercise that we just do with the hand is the, the salt in the soup this little exercise is so freaking simple that that in itself and i have experienced it over and over again with people saying just like what is that thing about somatic consent and what is that thing with the hands and what are we doing and why are we doing that actually and where is it going and, and what is my benefit and, and why should i do that and you know all this all these questions kind of now i can feel my hands but now what what am i doing with that so so that there is an a description to that the way how i see and perceive that when we can feel with our hands when we have that activated because there are so many nerve ending kind of related to um, different parts of the feeling center in the brain when our hands will get it the rest of the body will get it so and because we have so much nerve ending here but we have more nerve ending in our mouth our lips and our tongue and in our genitals so that means when the hands will get it the rest of your body will get it and i have to say it's really hardcore to feel something up with your mouth here on the on the, on the call <laughs> and it's really hard to feel something up with our genitals here on the call because it would just probably go <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a different direction you know so the hands makes it really easy so because there are so much intimacy related to our hands they're symbolic for giving and receiving and what happens is we release oxytocin when we feel so it's this electromagnetic sensation that we feel so the oxytocin sensation and we cannot only release oxytocin when we feel with our hands we can as well release oxytocin when we feel with our mouth and we can release oxytocin when we feel with our genitals and that is absolutely independent from any gender identification or sex. It doesn't matter, you know. Each one of you has skin. <laughs> Each one of you has a nervous system. Each and one of you is wired in that way from birth. And then on top, we have all these conditionings, ideas and beliefs and identifications and, you know, all this blurb on top of that, survivor strategies and, you know, shadows and all this kind of stuff or themes. And But the orgasmic blueprint is that existing part in our body. So we are naturally orgasmic in our, in our blueprint. That's, that's, our, that's our wiring. We are, we are all orgasmic beings. And, you know, in my research, and um, I can't really confirm that because I'm not in a woman's body. But in my research, what I found is that, that the female body through the wiring of the vagus nerve activity to the sexual organ for the womb is a different wiring. Yeah, I had sessions with, I don't know, how many thousands of women and workshops and, and trainings. And, and, you know, my experience is that the natural state of a woman is orgasmic. That most women I share that with when I work with them, that they resonate with that. They say, yeah, this is, this is my, natural, my natural state. This is how I am, you know, and, and, and this wiring between the you know, the earth or the, 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 the womb and the brain and the heart, you know, this entire kind of um, function in there is just, it's just the natural state and everything else on top that, you know, in our patriarchy, idiotic society we all live in has suppressed that for, I don't know, eons. So that the orgasmic blueprint is literally the capacity of tapping back in what is the nature of our very being.
and and the the, the best teacher that I could find in this orgasmic blueprint are women. Yeah, is 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 the is the is the the orgasmic neurological emotional capacity the wiring of being in a woman's body so that was partly in the last i don't know five six seven eight years my own journey into um rewiring my own capacity of my own nervous system finding my own orgasmic blueprint and there's a there's an interesting dynamic and see how far i just want to go into that and i just got it um, on the research that, you know, the moment we're born, um, no, it goes even before that, you know, the, in the development of the fetus, when the genitals getting developed in the 10th week, there is a specific connection of the vagus nerve into the womb in, in the woman's body. Yeah, and the same organ that is creating the womb is creating in the man's body uh, the cuppers gland on the prostate and the active vagus nerve activity in a woman's body to the womb is a dormant nerve to this cuppers gland on the prostate so there are some scientific investigations around that but the idea is that when this gland is getting activated that this that the vagus nerve activity in a, in a male's body can get activated. Women can orgasm when, when they are paraplegic, that their orgasmic capacity of their womb is still activated. So even if the nerve and the spine are cut, they can still orgasm in their, in their womb. The same with men is the case when they are paraplegic, that they can as well orgasm through their kappa gland vagus nerve activity. So to come back to that, so my own orgasmic blueprint is that my very cellular nature of my own capacity is literally being orgasmic. And um, my, my finding and my, 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 my truth is that um, every human being can go back to this natural, organic orgasmic blueprint that is um, accessible in the nervous system on the cellular level. And what I want to say with the exercise with the hands, uh, let's take another piece, the, the exercise with the hands is that the, that the core function of this orgasmic blueprint print to make it accessible, to make, make it workable is like the biochemical factory that in our body needs to be activated is the core substance oxytocin. No oxytocin in the system, no orgasmic blueprint. To bring it that to, to, to that is simple formula. And then the question is, what's the what's the core of oxytocin? And that's safety and connection with intimacy. So that's the orgasmic blueprint. Um, um, let's get all orgasmic together right here, right now. Who want to join? <laughs> so, so, so question is, um, if we are all from nature orgasmic in the present moment, because there's no other, you know, I cannot be orgasmic tomorrow. I cannot be orgasmic yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> my memory, but I can only be orgasmic if I'm dropping into the present moment. And the present moment, and this is where the magic is, is not happening in the mind. There is no present moment access in the mind. There's only present moment awareness access in the body, and that's everywhere below the mind in the physical realm, in the emotional realm. And what's your strategy right here, right now to not to be fully present? Or when I tap in my body right now, there is, there's on a cellular level, when I start expressing it from that side, something is getting activated on a soul level. 
it's a vibration on a cellular level when i bring my awareness to my body i can bring that in every part of my body in the right right now it's like a buzzing vibration when i express that it's just a verber it's, it just verberates from the sensation i'm aware of in the moment i'm saying it is already passed but when i'm tapping into the sensation of the feeling it's it's just it's it's super sweet it's exciting and it's very subtle but it's very it's very here now it's just very rich the the, the very nature of the sexual imprint in our nervous system through breastfeeding for example the the first imprint of sexual energy through the connection with my mother where i went to the core of this vibration in my nervous system and i recognize that when i look into society in the world i'm living in with people i'm living in that when I express that naturally, I go out and I go in a supermarket, I just go, I, I just go into on the street and I'm orgasmic, what my very nature is, I, this is dangerous. I, I can go out and <laughs> go orgasmic on the street. I can't drive a car. Being orgasmic, but being in society, it's, this is you know, socially not acceptable. I cannot go under normal friends and just be orgasmic who I have no idea about what I'm talking or, or, or if I'm expressing how I'm feeling. So there's a, there's a conditioning that this is not socially acceptable, being an orgasmic being, being in that vibration of who we truly are, truly are in that blueprint. Well, there's all these layers of social conditioning how we should and how we have to be. I was in this orgasmic state for about two days or so. So I just went to the beach and there was nobody there. And I just allowed myself to be completely free and just be orgasmic in this expression. And I just started to moan and scream out of joy there on the beach. There was nobody around and I could allow myself to feel completely free and do that. And I was, I don't know, it was probably for half an hour, I was moaning, I was completely, completely orgasmic. The expression being outside and being free and completely being an orgasmic being was so incredibly liberating. It's just not natural to show our nature. How would that be if we would just allow ourselves to let go of all these facade things and all these ideas and we, we would just for a moment allow ourselves to just to get loose and just to be in this vibration and without stop doing what we're doing not to be it and how to do that it's not safe to get out and be orgasmic it's not safe to be under other people and being orgasmic. Although, and I can only speak it for myself, I have an extreme deep longing to be in this natural expression amongst other people. And how is it for you? And when I'm talking about being orgasmic, I'm not talking about having a, a climax i'm not talking about this piece of the christmas tree i just like use all the build up to go with a person in a closed room into that state of having a climax and then going away i, I mean this place where we normally having a climax without having a climax being in that place of just like i am an orgasmic vibration my this is this is the nature of my orgasmic expression if I'm, if I'm looking deeper into the society conditioning about that, and I said, yeah, I'm an orgasmic being and I love to be orgasmic, I think I'm a little bit afraid, that much, maybe a little bit more, that I'm being judged as an addict. When in normal society, man has been already done and going to sleep, this is where women start and can't stop where the continuum is literally um, goes into this multi-orgasmic state. 
I personally think that this powerful expression of the female natural um, vibration must have been ages ago threatening, life-threatening for the power of man. And I, and, and I think this is a, this is a su su suppression of the female in our society. And that the, that the only way that I think we have as, as humanity have a chance to go out of that is that men wake the fuck up that this is the natural state of women and stop suppressing that, that they're waking up into the nature of themselves that they are then can literally be the women as they naturally are. You know, everything else that I see, I mean, every fucking movement that I see in the world is just a continuum of the patriarchy and the suppression of the female, um, um, of this vibration of the multi-orgasmic state of our very nature. This, what I call, I would call it the orgasmic blueprint. This is, this is the nature of our being and the cure is waking up into this sensation that waking up into the action of our skin. It's, it's, it's like a, a matrix key to unlock. Using our feelings, our emotions, our anger and our, our capacity to just like to put ourselves, and that's probably the thing why I have this here, to put ourselves out of the mud and um, and pulling ourselves out of the mud. This is this very little exercise I invite you into right now. Take an object in your hands. <laughs> mm. All right, and <sighs> do that for another four or five minutes, and feel free to. Keep your eyes open or close as you like and, and you know what to look for already. And while you're making connection with your skin, with your hands, I invite you as well to include your rational mind just for a moment into your experience that we have been talking a lot and you might have come into another vibration in your body. There are some ideas and concepts which spoke about resonating and some of them might be challenging. There might be some beliefs confronted. And that's all good too. So there's nothing wrong. It's all allowed. So that it doesn't matter where you are, you're exactly in the right space. So the invitation is to slow it down again. To slow the vibration down in a digestible here and now experience in your skin, in your body. Sensing, feeling. Just being present with what is on your physical sensing level of your hands, your skin. You don't need to create anything out of that. It just is, always was and always will be.
just just there. Hmm. self-regulating your nervous system in a digestible frequency till the next wave of your orgasmic blueprint will catch you And slow your hands down till they stop. Stay there for a moment and let that experience be integrated. So we were feeding your mind a lot and Can bring it back to your body at any time. And slowly, in your own speed and time, open your eyes. If they're still closed, and bring your awareness back to the screen. I haven't spoken on any <laughs> call about something that's really dear to me. And I have to say, I'm feeling a little bit shy doing that. And that's about the nipples. Because I have a, I play with an object and that's a little nipple sucker. <laughs> and if you don't have them, <laughs> go and get them because they're really good. Because there's a lot of oxytocin coming from your nipples. <laughs> And not only oxytocin. <laughs> so I just want to say that. Um, 